meditate on that. Great is your faithfulness, Lord. And every single morning that we wake up, when we rise, Lord, we see new mercies. Lord, today and tomorrow are days of new mercies. And we just thank you and give you glory. Lord, we ask you to touch our hearts. Minister to us today, Lord. Minister today with your power and your presence. Lord, if you're not here, we might as well go home. Lord, but you are here. You promised to be here where two or more are gathered. You said you'd be right in the middle of everything. And so we thank you, Lord, that you're so involved with your people. So many people believe you're far away, and you're not. You're close. Your word tells us that. Your word tells us you're very near. And Lord, as we, as we uh, speak of you, and as we open up our hearts to you, you said draw near to you, and you will draw near to us. And so, Lord, we thank you that you're a mighty God and great in faithfulness. And you're faithful to every person here today, everybody here. Lord, we thank you, and you're going to minister to them. And you're going to minister your strength, Lord. I declare strength in this place, Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. Those that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. And, Lord, we will mount up with wings like eagles. Lord, thank you, Jesus. The youth grow tired and weary, but those that wait on you will not, Lord. And we do that this morning, and we thank you, Lord. We give you praise for all that you're doing. We thank you for the many healings that have been take place this week. Lord, the, the, the breaking down of the strongholds. Lord, the strongholds that are coming down. We thank you for and give you glory. We are just relaxed in your presence today. There's no fear here, Lord. Perfect love casts out all fear. And there's none here today, Lord, because you are the captain of the Lord of hosts, taking care of every need and every situation that we face. And we give you all praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord has given a, a command to Joshua to take the land. <laughs> What's that? Verse again. Joshua 1. We're going to go down to verse 6. Just a second. Sure. Joshua 1, 6. You're calling the children of Israel into the land that he provided for them. You know God has a land for us. He's provided for us. Amen? Mm -hmm. You know that. And that's this country. That's this land that we live in. And the first thing they're going to encounter is a, a city called Jericho. And uh, the walls of that city, they say, were built by the Nephilim, the Nephilim, which were hybrids, mm -hmm. part angel, part human. Mm -hmm. And they had special knowledge. So they didn't build like we did, like, like we do when if a Category 6 hurricane comes, it falls down. Uh, that city was there, and it was there for forever, at least they thought. Weren't they like 10 feet? Ten-foot walls or something? Ten, yeah, and the blocks could not have been lifted by any mechanism that uh, was known to man at that time. It was said that they just whistled, and they had the tonality to be able to move things. Called forbidden knowledge. But anyway, I won't get too deep in that. But I want to read this verse to you because it's important. that We know what they were up against, and this is what the Lord told them. It said, verse 6, be strong. And courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their forefathers to give them be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you and do not turn to it from the right or the left that you may be successful wherever you go do not let the book of this law depart from your mouth meditate on it day and night. That means even when you're in the world, even when you're in the battle, uh, you're out in, in, in the midst of darkness. He says, meditate on the scripture so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. And here's a verse I want you to really look close at. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever Wherever you go, <laughs> hallelujah. He's going to be with you forever, forever and whatever you do, mm -hmm. wherever you go. If, as long as you keep, the, keep this book in mind, amen, wherever you go and whatever you do, you'll be successful. 
What a word from the Lord. Amen. And I invite you to take a moment and just get your Bible ready. You're going to, you might need it here. I got some scriptures up on the screen, but you might need it. Amen. So brandish your weapon. Amen. This morning. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I, I, had a, uh, I had a confession to make last week that much of what I preached last week was from a conference that I went to, and I just shared it. I felt the Holy Spirit telling me to do that. And there's some awesome things that are being said uh, that aren't necessarily by your pastor, and I believe you need to hear them. So some of these things that I preached this morning, I share with, come from some uh, people that I've listened to over, over the past few months. You've listened to them too. I know you have. Uh, one of them is Mario Murillo. Uh, one of them is Dutch Sheets. Now, not all of this comes from them, but there are some parts here. And so if I don't introduce them to you, but you heard this before, you'll know where it came from. And we operate on full disclosure around here. Because somehow or another, the enemy could get into stuff, you know? We don't want to block everything. We want to wall off every everything that he could possibly do. So I want to declare a message this morning to you. I want to declare it, that you are now a wartime congregation. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Right. Just like, Amen? Just like yeah. before World War II, the whole nation became a, a wartime nation. And so all kinds of things began to change in the nation. Big corporations began to change. They st Ford stopped making cars, and I believe they started making army tanks. Mm -hmm. And DuPont, uh, uh, I.E. DuPont, the French company, started to make things for war, and so on and so forth. So things began to change, and we're beginning to shift. Mm -hmm. Amen? We're beginning to shift. Mm -hmm. And Amen. we're going to stand as wartime people mm -hmm. because God is, God is at war with the powers of hell and darkness. Yeah. He's been at war uh, long before the cross. Mm -hmm. Amen. Long, even before Adam and Eve sinned, we know that he was at war with the powers of darkness. Amen? Amen. Darkness was over the face of the waters. And what did the Lord say? Let there be light. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's been battling darkness from that time. And so I want to share a, a, a verse of scripture with you. It's in Ecclesiastes 3.1. And then I'm going to read something to you that uh, Dutch Sheets shared a long time ago. But probably about three months ago, but I remembered it. Uh, this is Ecclesiastes 3.1. It says this, To everything there is a season and a time and purpose under heaven. Do you believe that? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You've gone through seasons, different seasons in your life. Amen. Sometimes they were real nice. and Other times they were troublesome, to say the least. But you got through it. Why? Because the Lord promised that you would. <laughs> Praise God. And verse 8 is what I want you to look at. Verse 8 says... A time of war and a time of peace. And beloved, right now, it's a time of war. Yes. Amen? Yes. But we have the weapons. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not, are, are not carnal. Right? Yes. We don't yes. grouch and grump at everybody. Amen? Yes. But they're mighty through God to the pulling down mm -hmm. yeah. strongholds. of strongholds. Yeah. Woo. Amen. Of strongholds. Yes. That is mighty. Amen? Because principalities, powers, strongholds rule these, these kingdoms of the earth. But the Lord's mountain is the greatest mountain. I preached that last week, and you know it from Scripture. Isaiah. And this morning I want to read uh, about a pastor. His name was Peter Muhlenberg. Some of you may heard about, have heard about him. But this was back in the year 1776. How many of you remember back that far? Nobody, right? Okay. But this was back in 1776. Pastor Muhlenberg, it says it was Sunday morning early in the year of 1776. In the church where Pastor Muhlenberg preached, it was a regular service for his congregation, but quite a different affair for Muhlenberg himself. Muhlenberg's text for the day was Ecclesiastes 3 and verse 8, which we just read. It's up on the board, where it explains to everything there is a season a place, or excuse me, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. Coming to the end of his sermon, Peter Muhlenberg turned to his congregation and said, in the language of Holy Writ, which is the Bible, 
There was a time for all things, a time to preach and a time to pray. But those times have passed. As those assembled looked on, Pastor Muhlenberg declared, there is a time to fight and that time has come. And then Muhlenberg proceeded to remove, remove his robes to the shock of his congregation, he was in a military uniform. Marching back, uh, back to, the, uh, to the back of the church, he declared, Who among you is with me? And on that day, 300 men from his church stood up and joined Pastor Muhlenberg. They eventually became the 8th Virginia Brigade fighting for liberty. And by the way, Pastor Muhlenberg's brother Peter... Uh, was against Peter's level of involvement in the war, Peter responded to Frederick's writing, I am a clergyman, it is true, but I am a member of the society as well as the poorest layman, and my liberty is as dear to me as any man, and I shall then sit still and enjoy myself at home while the best of the blood of the continent is pilling? So far I am far from thinking that I act wrong. I am convinced it is my duty to do so, Duly, I love and owe this to my country. Amen. Um, a time of war. But we've got the joy. Amen. We've got the joy of the Lord. We've got the peace of God. There's nothing to fear. In Joshua, he said, do not be afraid. Do not fear. Do not be dismayed. Amen. That means overwhelmed by all the stuff that's going on. He said, Joshua, go in there. Yep, I know. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's an Ephilim fortress, an Ephilim fortress. But it doesn't matter. Amen. I'm God. I'm over everything. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Now, I want you to look. At, it, it looks like a, I'm going in a different direction. I'm really not. Amen? But look at Proverbs 28, 23 up on the screen. I love this verse. This is a powerful verse. And I want to I release this verse to you, even though you've probably read it before, but I want to release it to you. It says, He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterwards than he who flatters with the tongue. Again, let's read it again. He who rebukes a man will find more favor afterwards than he who flatters with the tongue. In other words, that rebuke means when you rebuke somebody, you're what? You're telling them the truth, right? So if we tell the truth now, it says we are going to have more favor afterwards. Amen? Now, with the, with the war going on, I'm declaring war, we're going to tell the truth. We're not going to lie. That's, that's, our, that's our weapon, the truth of the Word of God. We're going to tell the truth, amen, and we're going to find favor afterwards, the Lord Praise says. God. In other words, we're going to cut our losses. I said we're going to cut our losses. Mm -hmm. if, if the church wants to go to sleep and not talk about things, amen, they're not going to cut their losses. But if we come right out, right now, on the front lines with the truth, we are going to cut our losses, amen, because the Lord is going to bless it. It's a time right now where you can get off probably scot-free, but you're not, by the way, by just holding your tongue. God says don't do that. Tell the truth, amen? That could, that's a good verse. They can get off scot-free right now, but a year down the road? Yeah. It might be all over. If they it's going to be a big loss. Yeah. A big loss. Right. Amen. Yeah. And so that's why we need to pray for the church. That they're awakened. That they're, they come alive again. Amen. Like we sang. Let those dry and thirsty bones learn to dance again. Amen. Dry bones. Live again. Come on. Hallelujah. All right. Praise God. So this is a message about, about how we're going to cut our losses. Amen. In the kingdom of God. How we're going to, we're going to thrive. How God's going to bless. Amen. Because why? Because we've allowed him to awaken us. Yes. Praise God. To awaken us in our time. Amen. It's, it, the time is war time right now. Yes. Praise God. So you are a war time congregation. Amen. Congratulations. Come on, Lee. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Lee was in the Navy. Amen. Hallelujah. So you're on that battleship again or whatever ship you were on. Amen. All right. He's ready. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. This is good. Yes. Amen, Lee. Thank you. Award time, uh, and again, these are uh, 
sometimes borrowed points, so just realize that, amen, like somebody from like Mario Marilla or whatever, says this, a wartime congregation will face the fact that our nation is being led by evildoers. All right, that's a fact. Yeah, yeah, it's a, they're, they're little, like the pit is opening, amen, the pit is opening. Uh, if you've read Revelation, you know what that's all about. Malachi, I want you to read Malachi with me 2.17, it's very important uh, we understand this uh, and, and the Lord's attitude, amen, towards the evil that's going on. And he's talking to his church. He's talking to his people in Malachi chapter 2, verse 17. And he says this, You have wearied the Lord with your words. You have wearied the Lord with your words. In other words, he's, he's saying, you're selling me out. You're, you're saying, I can't do things when I can do things. I can do anything. Praise his name. So we're going to have to be very careful. In the, we're going to speak the truth. Amen. We're going to have to speak what we believe God's going to do in our day. And it's got to be spoken. It can't be assumed. Amen. I don't have that power in my brain to just think a thought and have somebody get it. You know, that's demonic that's evil all right he says you have wearied the lord with your words yet you say in what have we wearied him i didn't realize i was wearying the lord i didn't realize i was making him tired he says in in that you say everyone who does evil is good in the sight of the lord and he delights in them or where is the god of justice so in other words, let's put this on, on modern terms. It's, it's a person sitting down saying, I'm not going to be able to do anything. I'm not going to be able to change anything. A lot of people think they can't win a soul. Do you realize that? Yeah. And, and where is the God of justice? Well, that's a big one, right? In other words, they're saying, well, I guess God's done with our country. I guess... I guess God moved us to this area of the country because not everybody's a, a native here. There are some natives. Amen. Looking at them, but, you know, otherwise, you know, we all moved here. And, and did God move us here to, to just see everything go up in smoke? I don't think so. I, I don't think he's done with the United States. I don't believe he is. Kathy said that perfectly. What does Kathy say? God chose Israel. Yes. America chose God. Yes. Chose God. Very good. Very good. You going to preach? Come on. Amen. Thank you, Kathy. You already know what I got to Thank say you, about Kathy. it. Thank you, Kathy. Amen. Good word, Thank Kathy. You, Kathy. What you already that? know what I got to say about it. I've said it before. All right. Say it again so everybody knows. reason why we have America, there, it is in Revelation. We are the eagle that carries Israel into the wilderness to protect the remnants from the tribulation. And that's why we have America, why we are free, and why we protect Israel. Because the men who started right. it knew that eventually the Jews were going back into the promised land. And they <coughs> would need someone to protect them from everything around them. Praise God. That's why they started this place. Yep. With the religious freedom that allows everybody to take their own belief. And as long as you don't beat somebody else over the head with it, you are free to do what you will. The Lord. So that we have the freedom to protect Israel when everything goes down. Okay. And that eagle's not Rome. We know that. So praise God. Amen. America, God's not done with our country. God's Amen. not done with us. Amen. God's not done with the church. Amen. All right? God's not done with the church, and he's not done with the country. And he's not done with Gillette. And he's not done and with Gillette souls. or Campbell no, County. Yeah. Absolutely. And the, and the best is yet to come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. The best is yet to come. <coughs> All those that you're working tirelessly, praise God. God's going to, like that first slide said, amen. God's going to reward you. God's going to bless you. So, uh, you know, people are saying, like I said, well, it's the end times. must be the end times. Nothing we can do about it. We're just going to slide in. The Lord's going to come back, and we're going to get out of here. Well, the Lord is going to come back, and we're going to get out of here. Hallelujah. But not, uh, but, but, you know, he's got us here for as long as he has us here. That's all I can say. 
Matthew 24, 14 says this, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Amen? I haven't seen the gospel preached to all nations yet. So don't think it's the end. Amen? All right, number two. Uh, salute your commander. Don't salute me. Salute Jesus. <laughs> We salute Jesus. Amen. A wartime congregation will educate their congregation as to the evils of the day. Amen. And by, by the way, educating, uh, Phyllis, you mentioned fear. Educating people on what's going on in the world is not breeding fear. Okay. Well, I mean, and when the mainstream media does it, yes. <laughs> But when we, we give warning to what's going on to try to awaken a sleeping giant, mm -hmm. it is not fear. Mm -hmm. It's not fear-based. It's to wake up. It's to wake the dead. Amen? So I want, I want that to, to be clear to everybody. Because there's so many charismatics that say, you start talking about this stuff here, you're all preaching fear, you're mongering fear. No, wake up. Wake up, O oh sleeper. Amen? All right, I got that off my crawl. Anyway, then it wasn't because of what you said, Phyllis. It's a different kind of fear. Amen. Ezekiel 22, 26. Amen. So we educate. We educate each other on the evils of the day. Ezekiel 22, 26. If, if, if that were fear, this would not be in the Bible. Okay? If, if speaking about the evils of the day... This would not be in the Bible because it would be fear-based, it would be sat satanically driven, and it would not have been allowed in Scripture. Here it is, Ezekiel twenty-two twenty-six. 26. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between what? The holy and the unholy. The holy is holiness. Even though Jesus died on the cross, forgave me of my sins, do I need to live a holy life? Yes! Yes! Holiness, yes, absolutely, because of what the Lord has done, you live a holy life. They have not distinguished between the holy and the unholy, nor have they made known the difference between the clean and the, uh, unclean and the clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath. You know, what, what's that commandment? First commandment, you know, uh, make the Sabbath a holy day. Amen? So they're, they're keeping their eyes off the Word of God, just they're looking around at what's going on, right, in the world when he's writing this. And he says, so that I am profaned among them. Profaned. That's, that's very serious accusations. This is Ezekiel 44, 23. And they shall teach my people, they're talking about the preachers, the difference between the holy and the unholy and cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Verse 24, in controversy, they shall stand as judges. What? Don't judge, church. In controversies, they shall stand as judges and judge it according to my judgment. Amen. There you go. Amen. Hallelujah. We're not talking about sin. Huh? You're not no, no you're not allowed. No, 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 no. Because mm. they don't want to offend them, so they won't go back to church. Exactly. Yes. Yes, and if, when you put things to the world on on Christian terms and things like that, well, you keep your religion in church. You're you keep judging it, them. Yeah, you don't judge me. All right. In controversy, they shall stand as judges and judge it according to my judgments, and they and shall keep my laws and my statutes, all my appointed meetings, and they shall hallow. My commands, my Sabbaths, right? That's a command. Amen? I hope you take a Sabbath because it's good for you. Amen? It's good for you. So, you know, they, these people, for some reason, the way they preached, all right, the, the way it was preached in their day, they knew that it's better to cut our losses now than to allow our congregation to fester in cultural compromise. Amen? And that's what a lot of the church is doing right now. I'm not here to, to beat up on the church. Believe me, there's a lot of that going on. But we have to understand and realize that they're festering in compromise. Cultural compromise. And that's not a good place to fester. Or to marinate. Amen? Not at all. So, 
You know, we're, we're, we're sounding a wake-up call. In, in wartime, you do that. Amen? There used to be uh, on television in the wars, there would be broadcasts. The president would come on or some, some official would come on or whatever and broadcast these things for the people to know that we're at war. And, and life is different when we're in war, but that's okay. Amen? Praise the Lord. Number three, because I've got a few more of these here. Uh, a wartime congregation will organize yes. immediately. <laughs> See, that's how you know it. when you're when you're not in war. It's like la di da di da di da. But when when you're in war, it's like yes, sir. Okay, right away. We get it. Yeah. Okay. It's urgent, right? The urgent. Where's the urgency? Where is the urgency? We were, Susan and I were talking about that yesterday. Amen? You know, church meetings, gospel meetings. Where, where's the urgency? We're at war. Numbers 10.9 says this, when you go to war with your land against the enemy who oppresses you. Let me ask you, is the world oppressing the church? Trying to. Yes. 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 Notice I said trying to. Yeah. Are they... A little bit successful. Yes. Tell the truth. Yes. Okay? It's not a negative confession. It's just the truth. He tries to oppress. Then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, and you will be remembered before the Lord your God. You will be remembered before the Lord your God. There's, there's something about this. I'll show you. And you will be saved from your enemies. Yes. Praise Woo! God. That is good. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. We will be remembered before the Lord and saved from our enemies. Praise God. We're cutting our losses right now. Glory to His name. Numbers 21.2 So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. Now, Christians don't like to do that. They don't like to... Finish the job. Mm. We're going to finish the job. With God's help, we're going to finish the job. Because we're going to take the ground and we're going to hold it. Amen? We're I said we're going to take the ground Amen. and we're going to hold it. Amen. 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 Verse 3. three. <laughs> and the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites. The Canaanites were bad. I mean, they were really bad. They put the people today to shame. I won't get into it, but they would. They, they delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of the place was called Horma, which means utterly destroyed. So God sent His people to do a complete job. Amen? And guess what they did? A complete job. Praise God. We, only, we don't only line up immediately and get organized immediately praise God but we we carry the job through till the very end amen so we're committed but this is what this is what got me I read down a little bit further in numbers and in numbers 21 14 it said therefore it is said in the book of the wars of the Lord notice it said up in verse what was it number number uh, numbers 10 9 he says, you will be remembered before the Lord your God and saved from your enemies. And then in Numbers 21.14 it says, there's a book called the book of the wars of the Lord. Hmm. Amen? You're in a book. If you're fighting the enemy, you're in a book. Praise God. Utterly destroy. Hallelujah. Number four, a wartime congregation. The unavoidable questions. Well, here, in case you're asking, what are those questions? Here they are, okay? I put two of them down. They're the ones with the arrows. What will you do? Uh, what will you do? Our unvaccinated members won't be able to be treated at the hospitals. They won't even be let in the front door. It's already happening. Mm -hmm. The church will have to take care of them. Are you ready for that? Yes. You ready? Mm -hmm. I know my wife and I are ready. Mm -hmm. We've got all kinds of got all kinds of treatments mm -hmm. for that people work. that work. work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least they work for me. Mm -hmm. I'm the guinea pig. <laughs> they work for me. 
They saved me out of a heap of trouble, amen, through the power of God. And Phyllis amen. too, a lot of us, we're, we're ready. We're ready. We can help you. Amen. We don't want to go to the hospital. <laughs> it's almost a favor. Don't forget St. Peter. He'd get with the shadows distance of somebody and everything would yeah. jump off him to get away from him. And exactly. God is no respecter of persons. Exactly. Amen. So we'll have to take care of some people, but that's okay. Are you ready to do that? Yes. Number two, some people are going to be fired from their jobs. They may have trouble finding any gainful employment. They'll need help, the kind of help you haven't dealt with ever before. And if there could be a lot of them, or there could be a lot of them. Are you prepared to take care of them? Mm. Let me tell you something. Are you putting away a little food for them right now? The other slide said immediately. <laughs> You're putting away stuff. I know, I know you guys are. But. Come on. Yeah. Don't just think about yourselves now. Oh, Stop meddling, Pastor Ed. No, I'm not meddling. I'm telling you the truth. We've, we've got to be ready. We've got to be prepared. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be, and I believe, like I know you guys believe, that this, is going to, this will cause a revival. All this horrible stuff that's going on right now is eventually, Susan said it, it's going to work for good. God's going to turn that around. People are going to cry out to Him. Christians are going to be kind to people. Amen? We're going to be kind to people. We're not going to cross our arms and say, well, you got the vaccine. And, and, and. We're going to just say, we love you. We love everybody. And that's the truth. We love everybody. And whether you're vaccinated, not vaccinated, I don't care. Amen? I'm going to take care of myself. And whatever you got in you and whatever you have to try to give to me, it ain't going to, it ain't going to penetrate because I'm going to take care of myself. And it's time that you all take care of yourself too. Whether you're vaccinated, unvaccinated, it doesn't matter. They're just trying to divide us. Yeah. I had to get that off my chest. They are just trying to divide the church. It's not going to happen. It isn't going to happen. We love everybody. We hug everybody. You know, and they know us too when they see us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Pastor, united we stand. Yes. Divided we divided fall. Divided we fall. Come on. Amen. I want to read this uh, Jeremiah 32, 17 to you. This is good. There's a song. I know Kathy knows it. <laughs> ah, Lord God, behold, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. And then there's the question. Yeah, I, I hear you humming it. There is nothing too hard for you. Amen. We're going to get through this. Yeah. We are. And we're going to get through this victoriously. Because there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Period. Any miracle that we need, any sign that we need, any wonder that we need, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. If you look at our illustrious Washington, D.C., you have to look at it and in the same breath say, there is nothing too hard for the Lord. That's spiritual warfare. Amen? I don't care how many symbols, I don't care how graphic things are, I don't care if they're all pagan temples, I don't care. There is nothing too difficult for the Lord. And I'm telling you, if the Lord has to wrap that thing up and throw it in the sea, He'll do it. Praise God. Praise God. <laughs> well, I was going to tell listen, last night I was listening to Timothy Dixon. Uh -huh. We call him the little truck driver. The truck driver, He yeah. gave a prophecy, and he said, and I believe that I've heard it before, Washington, D.C. will not be. There will be a new White House, and it will not be where it is. Thank you, James. It, you know, it can't be where it is. No. That ground is so corrupted, no. yeah. and, and it's all the Illuminati and the icky stuff. I mean, I'm not going to get into yeah. it, but it just is. And like you're saying, the buildings, the way the buildings are designed, yeah. the way they're set. I mean, it's all... It's all and, and God did, and He said, "Your White House, and it will not be." Glory to God. And it will not be in Washington D.C. It will be in a new place. And I, I don't know where that. He didn't say where. Well, but it, it won't be there. And I'm thinking, yes, <laughs> this is cool. This is hallelujah. great. That, that yeah. would that would that would please me immensely. Yeah. Yes, Lee. I'm going to go back just a minute to Joshua. And God told him to take the land. Mm -hmm. He took the land. 
you know, really did. He killed everything, every yeah. person, every man, yeah, woman, child, yes. all yes. of their livestock. Yeah, God who yes. did it in the name of the Lord. Amen. It has to all come down. Because, yeah. because it was tainted with the Nephilim mm -hmm. demonic seed. Yes. The DNA was corrupted. That's why even the animals had to be destroyed. There's a reason for that. Mm -hmm. And they were into gross abortion and all kinds of evil practices. Exactly. Totally depraved society. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Lord, we declare there's nothing too difficult for you. Okay. Just not quickly and then we have... Well, the reason why Washington, D.C. citizens can't vote in the presidential election is because it's sovereign... D.C. is District of Columbia, sovereign soil of Great Britain. Yep. And it has been since its inception. Exactly. Yep. Ain't even the United States. Nope. Sorry about the ain't, but anyway. <laughs> Number five. I've got two more. Hang in there. Uh, wartime congregation realizes they will soon be coming after your money. Yeah. Yeah. You've heard you've heard through the grapevine, haven't you? Yeah. That they're coming. Uh, they're trying. Just a couple of points here. They failed to keep the church locked down. Hallelujah. Yeah. The church yeah. came roaring back. Now they will go after your money. How will they do this? Biden is already planning to turn the IRS into a weapon against freedom of religion. By the way, Barack Obama did that, started that whole ball rolling. So mm -hmm. Biden's just, Biden knows the playbook like the back of his hand, if he can remember it. But anyway. <laughs> uh, just keep calling him Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Uh, the governor of New York won't allow religious exemptions because the progressive churches want vaccines. That's not legal. I know. I know. He's the church. They're, they're, <laughs> you know, and there are a lot of churches that are pro vaccination, you know, and you can't come to church unless you get vaccinated. Right. Well, what if I did that? I'd miss you. Uh huh. <laughs> many, many of you I'd miss. I'd have a, you know, but ser seriously, this is what, this is what's going on, okay? So many people fail. Look, look at this next, what's that? So many people fail to understand. Look up the word mandate. It is yeah. not a law. No, say. it's not. Yeah. Absolutely. We know. Many people think it's a law. We, we know. People un fall for it and it's not a law. Well, under here, I keep a copy of the Constitution right next to my Bible, okay? <laughs> it's not scripture, but it's very important. And we keep it here and we know, we know what it says. Just uh, Number two, just as the Bank of America shut down the bank accounts of conservatives in the same way the government is planning a bold and diabolical attack on your finances. This is not to give you fear, okay? Again, this is just so you know how to fight. Any church that does not comply with the state-run message will have their accounts attacked. Before you say, this can't happen, look back on what has already happened that we thought we could, uh, that we thought never could happen. That's and right. and uh, I have three high-profile people here. I've got General Michael Flynn, was canceled by J.P. Morgan, his accounts. I have a, a woman by the name of Lauren Witzke, who is a representative or a, a, a candidate for representative of Delaware. Wells Fargo closed her accounts. And then uh, a man by the name of Donald Trump, have you ever heard him? Mm -hmm. uh, Deutsche Bank and Signature Bank uh, closed his accounts. By the way, that lady I talked to you about, uh, Lauren Witzke, she was down vacationing in Florida when they closed her account. She had no money whatsoever. Good thing she had friends down there. What did they do with the money? They closed out her account so that she couldn't get it until she got back home. I they didn't see. steal her money, but they closed her account, they which means she couldn't her use her ATM account or any checks or anything like that. It. Not legal. They froze the account. They froze it. Yeah, that's the word. Thank you. Fro froze the accounts. So it's happening. Not Get a blow dryer. Unfreeze it. Unfreeze it. Amen. Come on. With Jesus we can. John 10.10. 10. The thief does not come except to steal. That's all he can do is steal. That's what the King James says. He doesn't do anything else. He's, he tries to steal something. And that could be your life to kill or your property to destroy. There it is. He is, Satan is very unconstitutional. Doesn't believe in property rights, doesn't believe in the right to life, and he steals. That's what he does. But Jesus says, this is so important for us to know and understand. I have come that they may have life, zoe, right, the Greek says, and that they may have it more 
abundantly. Abundantly. What does the word abundant mean in the Greek? The word abundant in the Greek means exceedingly, very highly, beyond measure, more superfluous. That means unnecessary. God gives us unnecessary things. Woohoo! Amen. I'm getting I'm getting excited. A quality so abundant as to be considerably more than one would expect or anticipate. Now, how does the church poo-poo that? The church poo-poos that by saying, that meant heaven. That means heaven. Well, it does mean heaven. They're half right. But it also means here on the earth. Praise God. There are other scriptures I can go to to show you that. But it, it means here on the earth. Amen? It be like that here. Yes, exactly. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, that guy Nick Vujic. Uh, He's starting a pro-life bank. With no arms and legs. With the guy with no arms and legs that preaches. Anyway, uh, he's starting his own bank. He's tired of, of uh, the banks that fund uh, Planned Parenthood and things like that. You know, So he's doing something about it. And we believe God's going to get some more people... Uh, online to do things like that. Amen? Amen. Time for great wisdom. We know that's the war plan of, of the dark side, right? The dark side wants to steal, to kill, and destroy. Period. That's why we battle. That's why we fight. Amen? Last one, number six. Wartime congregation realizes that the church is built on the rock and that the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Remember where, where, where he said that? I, I preached a message about, I don't know, six months or so. Where he proclaimed this from, yeah. he went to Mount Hermon. This is good, yeah. Mount Hermon, where the where the altar of what was the altar? Uh, I'll, I'll think of it. It was Baal. it was an altar to Baal, but it was mm -hmm. Pan, the god Pan, which yes. might as well say Baal. Uh, but anyway, it was where that altar of Pan was, where all the pagans went. To, all the pagans went to worship on Mount uh, Mount Hermon, and there was a big altar up there to Pan. Uh, and they, the, they, the gates of hell were right there. They proclaimed that there was this certain little cave with water in it as the, the literal gates of hell. And he made this statement right there at the gates of hell. Mm -hmm. And he said this to his church. He brought the whole gang up. He got a whole busload of disciples <laughs> and brought them up to Mount Hermon from Galilee, which isn't very far, but it's still a long trek uphill. And Here's where he proclaimed this. Simon Peter, Matthew 16, 16. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. In other words, Peter had revelation. Amen. You and I can have revelation too. But he said to Peter, he said, my goodness, he said, Peter, that was revealed to you from my father. My dad is talking to you. My goodness. Hey, verse 18, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Amen? Now, it wasn't the rock of Mount Hermon. It wasn't the rock of the altar of Pan. It was on the rock of what came out of Peter's mouth. Amen? His revelation. testimony. The revelation that Jesus was the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. Knowing that, beloved, knowing that that is in your DNA, as an army, as a person in the army of God, you can take this to the bank this morning. I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, hell, shall not prevail against it. What is shall not prevail? That means they might be able to annoy, but eventually they are not going to win. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It came out of the mouth of Jesus, right at the gates of hell. Right at the very gates where he put the enemy on notice. That my church, Satan, I want you to understand. You, you might hassle them. You might give them a little trouble. But at the end of the day, amen, if they focus on me, if they realize that I am their Savior, then I am going to lead them through into victory. Hallelujah. Amen. And whatever. And here's, here's how we know that that last statement that Jesus, that Jesus made, 
the one on the other slide. As a matter of fact, let's look at it. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. And how we know it's not heaven is we look over here at Matthew 16, 16, and you see, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, yeah. hallelujah, <laughs> abundant life is on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. Amen. So that cleared that up, right? I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Praise God. The promise of abundance is for this earth. Not just for heaven. The promise of victory is for this earth. I know we sing songs like, When the battle's over, we shall wear a crown in the new Jerusalem. Yes, that's absolutely true. But it's also true on earth too. We wear victory. I said we wear victory Amen. as the army of God. Amen. We are a wartime congregation. We are not a peacetime congregation. We want to be at peace with all men. Amen. Yes. Peace with everybody as far as it be with you. But we, are at, we know in the spirit we are at war. Yes. Praise God. And we have the truth of the word of God to back us up in any situation to remember the word of God. But we're doing it yes. as the kingdom of God. Amen. And God will be glorified. I declare it in the name of Jesus. I'm going to make some other declarations. I'm not done. We're going to declare this in the name of Jesus. Get your Bibles out. We're going to close this service out. Speaking the truth of the word of God. Joshua 1, 3, which says, I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. And so let's declare, Lord, you will give me every place that I set my foot. Come on, say it. Lord, you will give me every place that I set my foot. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Verse number six. Amen. I will uh, you can say it this way, I will lead your people to inherit the land. I will, I will lead your people, your people to, to inherit, inherit the, the land. land. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus Jesus. Name. Verse 7, I will be strong and very courageous. I will be strong and very courageous. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. I will not let the book of the law depart out of my mouth. I will not let the book of the law depart from my mouth. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Verse number nine, I will not be terrified or be discouraged. I will not be terrified or be discouraged. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Second part of verse nine. For the Lord my God is with me wherever I go. For the Lord my God is with me wherever I go. I declare it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The gates of hell shall not prevail against us. Amen. Let's say it. The gates, the gates of hell, of hell shall, shall not prevail, prevail against, against us in, in Jesus, Jesus, name. Name. Jesus' name. Amen. And Whatever I bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever, whatever I, bind I bind on earth will, will be bound in heaven. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So whatever I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you, Father, and I just, I just release, Lord Jesus, the Spirit of the army of the Lord into this congregation, the Holy Spirit, the Captain of the Lord of hosts. Lord, we thank you, the Father of all creation. We release, the Lord, the truth of the Word of God into your people. That is the weapon of our warfare. We release your truth. We release not opinions but we release not even morality because, Lord, we release your morality yes. from the Word of God yes. and we thank you and give you glory. In Jesus' name, we bless. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. amen. Love you all. Thank you for coming.